also. Yeah, I'm ready. Isn't God good? Oh, it isn't hot outside. And then some. And then some. Look, we got remember we're gonna, we're gonna go up and pray. That, that's where we're gonna pray again. But just Ben, Ben Rowe fell last week and broke his hip, and so he's in Boca County Hospital. And he said he weren't sure when the surgery was, but somebody just told me. I think Linda said that they did the surgery this morning. So I don't know whether we're gonna do the surgery. They're just gonna pull him in when they could. So obviously they did, and that's good because he was in a lot of pain. So remember Ben, and Barbara's still there. Barbara's been there since uh, Thursday. So uh, remember her. Remember, remember praying. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we love you, Lord. We thank you for this day, this chance to be in your house. God, the worship and spirit and truth. I ask you right now, Lord, to bless those that are here, those that would love to be here but can't. And Lord, I thank you, Father, those that are in the hospital. Bless them too. In the name of Jesus, we love you. We praise your name. The church said? Amen. Uh, and Vicki said she's having some problems with her head. Of course, we do that anyway, but... I think he's having some, other, she's having some hip problems and back problems. So we, she says she's Facebooking. So she, I'm pretty sure you'll see on the Facebook a comment about my comment. <laughs> All right. Ain't God good? Everybody stand up. It is so, 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 so hot. Thank you. But God's got this. You know what? I like to think about this. Let me just think about this. If you're saved, this is the only hell you'll ever see. Lord, period. If you're not saved, this is the only heaven you'll ever see. So I'm glad. <laughs> so think about it. Y'all ready? Let's say this together. Spiritual warfare is 10 percent Satan's tactics, 90 percent how we respond. Remember, with God, we are not helpless, hopeless, but we are powerful. Give Lord a hand clap of praise. That's right. Me. These are the two most important hours of my week. Help me to cherish them. I'm here today to worship, not to be entertained. I'm seen to an audience of one to accept my worship. Oh Lord, give you a little hand clap of praise. I, mean, it's getting, I know it's getting hotter as the days go by, but it also gets sweeter as the days go by because I'll tell you what's going to happen. Coming up in a couple of months, it's going to start getting cooler. But also to help us, it's still going to be sweeter. Amen? And sweeter and sweeter and sweeter. Uh, and so we thank God for that. Are you ready? Let's go ahead. How do we start? You go start. Let's 
say this together. I live my offering to you, may it please you, O Lord. This is my seed. I will leave my hand, it will never leave my life. You will multiply. I set my seed, O Lord. Give Lord a hand clap. Reach out, touch, Lord God, each and every one of these and show yourself strong on behalf of your people that testimony would be given, Father. And we'll thank you for everything. And Father, be with us in the remainder of this service today. Father, just prepare our hearts to receive. And Father, anoint the pastor to deliver. Father, we'll thank you for everything that's said and done and give you all the glory, honor, and praise. In Christ Jesus' name, the church said. God good. All the time. All the time. good. That's how that stuff will start me out here. Who in the rabbit trails? Amen. Really? I mean, you know what God has done in your life. And then some. He's still working. Amen. He's still working. Ready? Let's go ahead and do this thing. Go ahead and Thank you. 
pray that he goes away. And so look, said, we rebuke you in the name of Jesus and the snake roll on. I have no idea where we went with the rest of the service. I kept looking around my feet. <laughs> God is so, 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 so good. That's it. It's so hard on my feet. Five times already. The attorney, 
The youngest son, the 20 year old, how old is he? The witness is 20, most like your IQ. Attorney, doctor, how many of your autopsies have you performed on dead people? Witness, all of them, but I was doing too much of a fight. <laughs> Attorney, now doctor, is it true when a person dies in his sleep, he doesn't know it, doesn't know about it until he wakes up the next morning? The witness said, did you actually pass the bar exam? And finally, I love you, y'all can't wait for the finally. The attorney says, how was your first marriage terminated? The witness said, by death. The attorney said, by whose death was it terminated? He said, take your gig. <laughs> Woo! All right, I'll leave that alone. I, 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 I'll tell you what, even though it's true, I'm going I'm to tear it out of here, okay? Never use again. All right, here we go. <laughs> All right. Bible if you want to turn it to John chapter 13. Uh, I'm going to let you sit since it's so hot right now. I'll let you sit. And uh, we're going to go right in from last week. And, and this is really, 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 really awesome. And at this day and time, with all the stuff that's going on and all the tempers that are flaring and, and all the stuff that's happening around us, and people just can't seem to get a grip on reality. They're always going to fight each other. And, you know, and, 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 won't let somebody talk. They won't let the person talk because they're too busy wanting to be heard. And all that's going on. I, 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 in the hospital, I, I couldn't believe in the hospital. I've uh, been sitting in the hospital virtually a lot between uh, 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 Linda and with Barbara. We stayed there for like six hours in the emergency room. And uh, going in the hospital and being in the hospital and sitting in there. Uh, uh, like with being with Barbara. And you get to hear a lot. And it's amazing how it seems like everybody's tempers are like this. And it seems like a lot of people have been getting really grumpy lately in the world. I'm not talking about in the year, I'm talking about in the world. And you may know somebody's getting that way. And honestly, if you be honest with yourself, you may be getting that way. I've noticed some kind of about myself getting grumpy, and I say, God, this is not me. Help me to get ungrumpy, okay? But it's because of the time that we live in, the pressure. Um, it's hard to believe this, but there's a lot of pressure. Sin has pressure. And as sin is slowly taking over, and now it's gone from slowly to snowball. When it was slowly coming in, we could push prayer and push it off. But now it's snowballing. And the stuff that we used to call good is being called bad. And the stuff that's bad is being promoted. And there's so much going on. And, and, and the Christian seems to have, uh, seems to be like they're not in high, cement, high demand right now. So all the stuff going on around us is very easy to let the pressure push you in. That's why Jesus said, be not conformed to this world, but you transform by the renewal of your mind. That word, be not conform to this world, literally means don't, don't allow the world to press you in to the point where they remold you. Have you felt yourself being remolded? Especially with, I watch TV and I, I turn the TV off. I start watching the news and I say, just turn it off. Or Linda will come and say, just turn it off. Because I'm here, I'm, I'm here. I don't want to get a chance to hear you this, I don't hear you getting this upset about something. What's going on? And I start telling what's going on in the world back and forth and things are going on. And, and just like yesterday, yesterday morning, uh, I was I was working, getting ready to uh, uh, go do something else. And twice while I was sitting there on the couch, twice, the, the, the alarm came out. If you got your phone, your phone came out too. Or twice yesterday, uh, children being abducted. There was one yesterday morning, one yesterday afternoon, and and it's just it's just all this stuff's going on. The pressure is immense in this world, and because he said, "Be not be, uh, be, uh, 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 be not conformed to this world, be transformed out of your mind." And in this world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer; I will overcome it. That word tribulation also means to press you so hard that you become somebody that you normally aren't. Now, again, we all, all of us are in this boat. 
It's like if you ever gone to the store because the prices just keep going up and up and up and up and up and up and triple, and you go there and you argue with the checkout person, get mad at them because they ran you up and it was three times more expensive than it was a couple years ago. And Lord told me one day when I, when I found myself going, I can't believe this. And, and I actually find myself, actually, I don't do it, but at that moment, I actually find myself getting angry with the person checking me out. And I did. So, wait a minute, they're in the same boat I am. They're paying the same prices I'm paying. They're not getting a break. You know, and so the same way, all of us are in the same boat. We're all in this together. The tribulation, the pressure is so hard as the world is imploding. We're imploding. That's what's happening. We're imploding. As the world is imploding, we're all, if you're not careful, you're going to be pushed and pushed and pushed until you become somebody, you're pushed in the mold and you become somebody that you don't want to be or somebody that somebody doesn't want to be around you anymore because they can't stand who or what you're becoming. Now, now uh, that's all just the pre pre into this thing to, to get, you, get you going to this thing, but, but somebody's speech thing. And again, I want you to notice that mask. For those that weren't here last week, notice that mask. That mask, he's got a gas mask on, but the gas is on the inside. Think about it. You put a gas mask on to protect yourself from what's on the outside. But he's got his gas mask on, and his gas is on the inside. And so that's kind of like our attitudes. Our attitudes are like this. Sometimes we find ourselves thinking that everybody here is having a bad day. Everybody else is just having a hard day. You realize that you get thinking about it. Maybe one of them, after all, maybe it's me. Maybe the stuff's not on the outside of my mask. Maybe the stuff's on the inside of my mask. So just going to quickly kind of go over last week, and then we're going to, and then and not all the slides from last week, but, but, but some of them, and then we're going to, then we're going to uh, 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 go on to this week. So, so uh, uh, it was the eve of the passion. The disciples had been with Jesus for three years. Can you imagine walking with Jesus for three years? I mean, you actually saw him cast the demons out. You actually had a chance to see him work miracles. You watched him raise the dead. You know, you knew that he was the Son of God. You were on that boat when he stood up and said, Peace be still, and the wind had stepped down. You were on that boat when, uh, when he walked out on the water. And Peter said, It would be how you bid me to come. You saw Peter jump out of that boat, and both of them walked on that water. And then you saw Peter sing. We see Jesus. He's right now and pulled up. Can you imagine that kind of knowledge? That's being fed into you for three years. I mean, some serious, serious stuff. And now, the whole time, Jesus has been trying to tell them that I'm only here for a short time. That I'm actually going to die. The Son of Man is going to be raised again. And so, as He begins to tell this, they're so busy what they're saying that they're not listening. So, Jesus knew he didn't have much time left. And so, this night, the pressure's really getting tough on him. Matter of fact, when he goes to the garden, the Bible says his sweat becomes his great drops of blood. He said, well, how can that happen? And I can't think of a medical term for it, but, but actually the capillaries are in the front of your, or the, or the end of your skin, or the close to the edge of your skin, when you get under so much pressure, remember my pressure, that it actually ruptures the capillaries and you sweat blood. This phenomenon happens all the time as men on death row are marching to their death. As they're marching to their death and knowing they're going to die just a matter of minutes, the pressure is so strong on them, many times they start sweating drops of blood. Just like Jesus. Because Jesus knew that no matter how worse, what he's going to be facing. So now, he's getting their support, but they're arguing. they got wrong attitudes all over the place. <clears throat> and so he knew that these attitudes were there, and so that he was going to have to drive a very, very, very hard lesson because it's amazing to me, this is his last lesson. I mean, he, he talks a lot more, he's got more, he's got more he's talking about, but as far as a picture lesson, this is going to be 
his last one. So I like to thank you if it's going to be his last one. It'll be one of his one of his uh, dying declarations. Although there's seven sayings on the cross, and although there's a whole lot of pictures and type on the way to the cross and all that, there's still lessons being taught all along the way. But this here, this lesson, was specifically for these twelve. And it was going to go out and out and out, but he did the lesson because what he was trying to say is, fellas, get your act together. Don't you see what's happening here? And you're acting like a bunch of heathens. That's what he said he did on Boston Tribe. But he's going to do a little bit different. He's going to do something that's going to last forever. So the tithe, the ultimate lesson. Let's read this together. John 13, this is the Amplified Version. If you've got to get your Bible, you can read along with it. What a version you got. Now, before the Passover feast began, Jesus knew, was fully aware that the time had come for him to leave this world and return to the Father. And he loved those who were with him, or who were his own in the world. He loved them to the last and to the highest degree. So it was during the supper, Satan had already put in the thought of betraying Jesus in the heart of Jesus Iscariot, Simon's son, that Jesus, knowing fully aware that the Father had put everything into his hands, and that he was come from God and was now returning to God, got up from supper, took off his garments, took up a servant's towel. He fastened around his waist, and when he had poured water into the basin, water basin, or water basin, began to wash the disciples' feet, and to wipe them with the servant's towel with which he was girded. Now, quickly, this towel, he says, says it, later on, after he does this, he says, this new commandment I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, you must love one another. The world's not going to know you're my disciple by how good you can preach. The world will not know you're my disciple by how many talents you have, or how good you can play, sing, whatever, the world's going to know you're my disciples by your love shown to one another. Not just to the other disciples, but to those that are around him. So, here it is, the tower. The fullness of lessons, okay? It was the fullness of time. He knew that he was getting ready to leave this place. It was a fullness of destiny. He had come to here for this. He said he knew what his father put him here for. It was accomplished. It was in his hands. And he was trying to show a fullness of example. So the full example of love is to serve, not to be served. Matter of fact, I tell you, a lot of problems be handled a lot differently if we could learn to serve instead of thinking we need to be served. Amen? You know, uh, amazing stuff happens when we learn to serve. So, so let's go a little bit further, and then we're, then we're going to hit it right off. And let's explain this to us. Read the next one. Jesus said unto him, You do not understand now what I'm doing, but you will understand later on. Peter said unto him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus asked him, and said, Unless I wash you, you have no part with or in me, and you have no share in the companionship with me. Simon Peter said unto him, Lord, wash not only my feet, but my hands and my head too. Jesus said unto him, Anyone who has bathed needs only to wash his feet, because he's clean all over. And you, my disciples, are clean, but not all of you, for he knew who was going to betray him. That was the reason he said not all of you were clean. So now, again, the ultimate lesson. And let me tell you, let me explain what, he was, what Jesus was trying to tell him. In that day, they had a common bathhouse. Not everybody could afford indoor plumbing. Not everybody had indoor plumbing. And so what they did was they, they had a common bathhouse where people could go and they could bathe. And so what happened is they come out clean all over, but as they walk to the house, they pick up dirt and debris. So, although their body was clean, their feet were dusty. Their feet were nasty. Their feet might have stepped in something that you don't necessarily want to step in. Anybody ever bought in a chicken yard? Barefooted? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, the worst thing I can think of, my grandma was, they had chickens all over the place, they were running there barefooted. The worst thing about walking through a chicken yard is not stepping in that stuff. The worst thing about walking through a chicken yard is losing your bubble gum and finding it three times. Not funny. All right. 
Alright, so now, this is the picture of the Christian. Salvation is the baptized. We come out clean. We're clean. We're going to go to heaven. But as we walk through this world, we pick up attitudes, we pick up debris, and God's saying, you don't have to get saved all over again, but you got to be refreshed. you got to rededicate. you gotta, you got to let me wash away that bad attitude or that debris that you picked up in your life. And so, here it is. Start here from last week, and we're going on to ready? Ready? Here we go. First, they stepped, it's a step in what? They stepped in pride. Uh, Luke 22 and 24 said they counted who was the best. He was trying to say, I need y'all, and they're trying to figure out which one of those were the best. Then, uh, Peter himself said, I will not deny you. He said, y'all going to deny me tonight, and I'm going to be taken, I'm going to be crucified. It says, he says, not me. They might do it, but not me. So now, all of a sudden, now he's gone from, from, from being the kind of who's the best now to saying, being overconfident. You ain't got to worry about me, God. I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there. Well, he wasn't because he couldn't stand the pressure. Proverbs 16 18 says, Pride comes before destruction and an arrogant spirit before a fall. Then, instead of anger, the Bible says there was strife amongst them. There were strife and quarrelsome. We're going to really, really dig into that in the next slide. But quarrelsome is not just an every now and then occasional argument. Have you ever seen brothers and sisters how they bicker all the time? I was, uh, I was with uh, uh, Annalene and Emery, and they constantly, I was there for a few hours, they constantly picked at each other, constantly, constantly. And I'm like, I said, girls, you need to quit arguing, quit fighting. They said, we're not arguing, we're playing. Well, I'm glad. <laughs> and then, and so then uh, uh, I was with Dylan and Elizabeth, same thing. And I said, y'all need to calm down, but y'all gonna hurt each other, we're just playing. It was constant, constant, constant poking and constant picking. Well, you know what? That's what this was even more than that. These guys were so busy trying to find out who was Jesus' pet. Who had done the most? Who had Jesus used the most? So, so the test of a quarrelsome spirit, the first instinct, when a person's got a quarrelsome spirit, the first instinct is to criticize. The last instinct is to encourage it. You find fault in everything and everyone, and it becomes a critical spirit. Now, let's go back over here to this cross now. Now, Except in bitterness. This is all appearing in the upper room. Now, this is Jesus getting ready to die, and this is the attitudes that were in the upper room. This wasn't down on 3rd Street, 4th Street, 7th Street, 9th Street. This wasn't down in the bar. This was in the upper room with Jesus as he's breaking bread. Tell his disciples, this is my body broken for you. This is my blood shed for you. And they're still arguing. After I studied this and now I see uh, the picture of the Last Supper and the guys are all going around. You're supposed to be, am I the one, am I the one? That's what you're supposed to be doing. But I often think of this there. We're talking about, I'm better than you, I'm better than you. I know you are, but who am I? In the upper room, with Jesus, he just gave them the very first communion. He gives them communion, and they're still arguing. It's now bitterness. Is in there now because it said there were strife ones. There were strife means we find the strife. It's continual strife. It's not just a little bit, it's continual strife. And when you have continual strife with somebody, it leads to bitterness. What is bitterness? Bitterness is anger stretched out. Don't think about who you may be bitter with now. Don't even think about uh, who you might you already might be making a list of. No, I just want you to listen. Bitterness. Jesus is getting ready to die. And bitterness is in there. You see, according to the Greek, it seems that the disciples constantly argued. So bitterness is going to be a problem. Even after the resurrection, 
Then Jesus, alive and well after the cross, with the nails in his hand, the nail prints in his hand and in his side and his feet. And he's talking to them. He's going to tell Peter how he's going to die. Peter says, well, what about John? You know, when I read this stuff, you know what makes me understand more than anything? Is that those disciples were as human as we are. Just as human as we are. They were with Jesus. Jesus was the God man, 100% God, 100% man. But the problem was the disciples were 100% man. And Jesus is trying to work them through some issues. And so, so they stepped in bitterness. Huh. Here comes a good one. Step in selfishness. I need to sit down for this one. Selfish is me first, me first, me first, me first. That was a common thread with all the above. Let me read this for you. Matthew 20, 22, 24. In the upper room. Then the mother of Zebedee's children came up to him with her sons, James and John's mother, and worshipped him and asked a favor of him. Wait a minute. Didn't y'all just hear he's getting ready to die? Jesus is getting ready to die. He's going to somebody to minister to him. And now mom's coming up to her son that says, uh, that says you know, hey Jesus, I, I really need something. Can I talk to you for a minute? And he asked her, what do you wish? And she asked him, give orders that these two sons of mine may sit, one at your right hand and one at the left in your kingdom. Wow. Wow! They're still thinking that Jesus is going to set up a kingdom, destroy the Romans, he's going to set up this earthly kingdom, and they want her sons to be the right hand and the left hand of Jesus. Jesus is getting ready to die and needs some support, and she's trying to work it out for her sons to be at the first of the list. Wow. But Jesus replied, you do not realize what you're asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I'm about to drink and to be baptized with the baptism which I am baptized? They answered, we are able. They have no idea what they're talking about. He said to them, you will drink my cup, but cease at my right hand and at my left are not mine to give. But they are for those for whom they have been ordained and prepared by my Father. But when the other ten other disciples heard this, they were indignant at the two brothers. They were indignant is to be greatly afflicted, to be much sore, very displeased, and very good. Now, again, I can't say this enough. Jesus is having the most intimate time with his guys that he can have. He's getting ready to go to be scourged, to be beaten, and to be crucified. His guys are up there. He's given this last intimate moment. Can you imagine being given communion by Jesus? The very first one? And they're arguing. I think if I'd have had the towel, <laughs> I think I'll over Peter said, come here. Stop that! Not Jesus. Next, this is upper room where Jesus is at. They set the calluses. All the above led to a severe case of calluses. Jesus had informed them. He had forewarned them about what was getting ready to happen. But they were so couched, it blinded them to what he was even saying. As a pastor, as a counselor, as a friend, and especially as a dad, have you ever tried to tell your kids, you're really getting ready to borrow more than you can chew? They go, oh, no, 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 I know what I'm doing. Well, I'm just telling you, I tried that. It didn't work out so good for me. You might want to consider, I got the 
is dead. Well, you know what's coming? I know what's coming. Okay. A few days later, they come to you all beat up, so to speak, and go, wow, I didn't even see that coming. After you told them. Why? Same thing. As a counselor, same thing. As a pastor, same thing. Because they were so calloused and blinded by what they were thinking that they couldn't hear what Jesus was saying. Too callous to actually sense the actual need of the hour. You know, it's easy to get callous when you're going through things. You know, like they had a mama. The mama, the first time the mama was a mama, the very first baby. If that baby, if that baby just goes, she hears it go. She automatically takes him in the bathroom and changes that diaper. It don't need to be changed. He just had a little gas. Doctors just pass it by on the ground and pick it up and had to run through the sink and they make sure the water's good and hot and they pull it under that thing and they pull it out and, and do it again. And they go, three times. Yeah. By the time they had the third baby, you hear something. <laughs> and they pick that baby up and go, yeah, he's an archer, you hear that? Or, or, let me just check and see if that was something in there. Yep. <laughs> that third baby drops his fancy fine chicken yard. Mama picks it up and goes, put it right back in his mouth. Because you see, they grew callous to the safety because of all the pressure that's constantly happening to them and that they're under. So now, in what? <laughs> I'm glad you asked. <laughs> they were so caught up in themselves that they never even realized until the garden, until the trial, until the scourging, until the cross, that Jesus was trying to tell them that he needed their support. And they ran. They ran because during the prep time, they had their own focus. As Jesus was getting them ready for what was coming, they had their minds so many other places. He's trying to explain what's happening, and all they can think about is, what about me? What about me? What about me? What about me? How great I am. How great I am. And Jesus is saying, Somebody, calm down for a minute. Let's reel back in and get our focus. And get your Bible out. Philippians 2, one of my favorite chapters in the whole of the Bible. Philippians. Philippians chapter 2. Each esteem of other better than themselves. 
Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Here it is. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. That word mind, look it up. That word mind is attitude. Let this attitude be in you that also was in Christ Jesus. Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, took him in the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God hath highly exalted him, and given him a name above every name, that in the name of Jesus every knee should bow, and things in heaven, and things on earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God, the Father. Now let's, let's break this down. You ready? This is good stuff. This is like spinach and pie. This is like collards and pigtails. The old country boy. Ready? Let his attitude be in you. Ready? Jesus was moved to a position, serves hard, he gave up his divine form. He was God. He couldn't kill God. So in order to be killed, he had to be man. So he gave up, and he never stopped being God. Never did he stop being God. Not at one moment did he stop being God. But at the same time, he had to operate in, 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 the, in the realm of man. He was the son of God, but he's also the son of man. This is the son of man. In order for him to do what he had to do, his mission, he had, the Son of God had to become the Son of Man. That way he knows what it's like to feel hunger and to feel pain and to be exhausted and to work without work and, and have to put up with all kinds of things. He knows what it's like because the Son of God, the Son of God knew no pain. The Son of when he was just the Son of God alone, he knew no pain. He knew no heartache. But when he became the Son of Man also, The great mystery. Now he feels it. So he gave up his rights, verse 7, and became a man. <clears throat> verse 7 also he became a serpent. Verse 8 he became obedient to death. And verse 8 he died a horrible death. This is this is just before this, in all eternity, the angels ministered to him. And now he's on earth. See, lessons from the towel. You got a choice in life. You can pick up the whip, or you can pick up the towel. I can be at Walmart or Food Line or be somewhere in the hospital. I don't see that whip being used. And it just has to be used harder and harder and harder. Or either you just go ahead and take all, all, all of the self out of somebody because you just beat them so hard they don't ever have self worth. Why do you pick up the time? So, that's the truth of time. The more he was securing God, he said he knew he came from God, he was going back to God, he knew what his mission was. See, look, he knew why he came. He knew what he had to do. He knew where he was going. He was secure in the time. I remember at Fountain, I had the lady that did the apparel. She came to me and said, I need a favor. I said, what kind of favor do you need? She says, I got a whole bundle of pink fountain shirts here for men. And said, so they won't wear I can't sell them. I said, why should they? Because they think they're sissy. And she says, I know that you're secure in your manhood. And I know you're secure in this stuff. I said, she said, can you do me a big favor? I said, why? She said, can I let you wear a couple of pink shirts? So they ain't problem me. I think they're pretty. Of course, you probably could color by the person too, but that's okay. I had a camera one time, and I had no idea. I had to think for five years to find somebody to my daddy or somebody said, why'd you buy a pink camera? I said, it's not me. 
Linda said, it is, I still want to say anything to you. Had over five years of being camp, walking around taking pictures of the being camp. I'm glad I was secure my man. She said, if you were at that shirt, the people know that you aren't a sissy. They know that you're not a coward. They know that you don't mind stepping in any position and taking care of business. So when you wear that shirt, I wore that shirt, and about a week or two, they started to sell it. And she thanked me. She said, because other people realized that pink is not just for sissies. They're for real men. I used to tell her, I go out and say, what you wearing a pink shirt for? Hoodie. I go, well, number one, I'm cool blood. And number two, I'm a real man. I said, I'm not defined by what color I wear. I'm defined by who God says I am. And there's nothing in God's word that says I can't wear pink. <laughs> Thou shalt not wear pink. And it's just funny to watch people around with pink shirts on all over the place. You see, he was secure in the towel. I was secure in the pink shirt. And when you're secure in this towel, it'll bring joy. Not just to you, but to the person that you're with. It'll bring happiness. And it'll bring change. Get ready, we just about ready to close. Here's the towel challenge. Y'all ready? The next time you get caught in an environment of attitudes, The next time you find yourself, your own attitude getting a little crazy. What time? I promise you. You'll find it hard to stay mad at somebody or be bitter toward them. But instead of you could do this, you do this. I had a very valuable lesson when I was at the dancing. And I'm not sure if the guy who knew was doing this, I had no idea. This guy, you don't have any here where we're at. Always to one, to one side, there's going to be water. The room the coast. And there's ponds. But in Benson, all he has ponds. And a big old Jordan Lake. This one guy of a church, he does good fishing in his ponds. So we go fishing in his ponds. Me and DC and Daniel, we're fishing. And DC and Daniel called me over and said, Dad, look. And then back there in Benson, the one-man boat was a big thing. You buy a whole canoe, cut it in half, make one-man boats out of it, and use them to fish in the ponds. He said, look, and this guy's name was Dave. He said, look, brother Dave's boat sank. He had it tied up right here, and it sank. And sure enough, that boat was sunk right there, tied up. He said, Daddy, wouldn't it be nice if we would do something nice for him since he lets us fish here all the time? Maybe pull the boat up. I said, well, it's kind of hard. He said, Daddy, we'll give it all we got. Please, let's do this for this man. I said, well, I said, Daddy, please. I said, all right. And so we finally got the boat. We pulled him, we took him, we pulled him, we took him. We finally got the boat up out of the water. And we poured the water out of it and let it flow. By the time I got home, that man's wife had called. My wife had said, Your son, and your sons, and your husband is on the hit list. And she said, why is he on the hit list? He said, because David was making a crappy bed. Got a little kind of make the bed. Okay. He's making a crappy bed. You do it with tires. You do it with an old log. He didn't have any tires. He didn't have an old log, but he had that boat. And he said, the crappy were just really starting to school around it. And said, 
he come in to go fishing at that crappy school school was at. See, the boat had all those miraculous that come from out of the bottom of the lake on to the top and said, it figures that y'all were the last ones there, y'all had to afford it out. And my wife said, did you pull up this one man mug? I said, yeah, but then we tried to do him a favor. And she said, well, he's not feeling very favored right now. I said, why? She said, because that was his crappy bed he was building. It took him months to build it and took y'all an afternoon to destroy it. Said, that's not good. <clears throat> and church was like in the next day or something. So he comes to the church. And I went to him to let me have it. And he comes up to me. He says, Brother David, I said, Can I help you? <laughs> I knew it was. Can I help you? The DC, I said, DC, then y'all go back. I said, Can I help you? He said, Yeah. <laughs> And I embraced myself. And he said, hold your hand now. I'm thinking, don't tell me he's going to take the whip and beat my hand right here. And so I put my hand out. And he gave me the nicest Zeb code reel I had ever owned in my life. Stuck it right there. He said, I just want you to know you're a great friend and I love you. And even though you destroyed my back to <laughs> You still the man. And he said, I love you. Walk off. I was kind of like, <sighs> I was expecting to give a whoop. <clears throat> and instead, he brought me this great big, I mean, zip cut, whatever it was then. <clears throat> I was expecting the whip. I was like, I was scared to even talk to him, but I'm sweet. Since he's been building it for months. Notice, I said it last week. Notice, they got here wearing blue jeans. 
And in my mind, what I'm picturing is two people wearing blue jeans, but the person that's dressed like Jesus is, he is a picture of Jesus when he does this. We got a lot going on in this world right now. It's bad. I, I haven't, I don't watch all. I'm only 63, but I've never seen it like this. And I remember when the biggest problem in school was shooting rubber bands and, you know, stomping milk cartons and chewing bubble gum. Maybe, you know, slipping somebody a note. But that's when we have prayer in school and the Bible. Every morning we got up to the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. There was a devotion read over and a Bible verse read every morning. They replaced prayer with bubbles. And now instead of bubblegum, it's not the milk cartons. <coughs> People are being raped in school. Drugs are being sold. I remember way on back. 25 years ago. We were getting assessed to be foster parents so we could get with them. And they had all of us, me, Beverly, DZ, and Dan, they fingerprinted all of us. They interrogated all of us. I mean, they thought we were criminals. I mean, they were doing all kinds of stuff to us. And this is in Johnston County. And I heard two deputies talk. <coughs> South Johnson High School was 4A. I'm not sure what it is now, but it's 4A at the time. And I heard one doc deputy drugging and talking to the other guy and said, we're getting ready to do a, a search in Johnston County High School in the lockers for drugs. And it blew me away. This is 25 years ago. He said, well, we have to give the school four days notice. Before we do this. And I looked over here and said, Why are you even going to have to do it then? Crazy. That was way about 25 years ago. I remember when Daniel was on the drug force. Daniel, 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 if you look at his baby face, you can see his body was big, but he still had that little baby face. Remember one day he stopped somebody when we had his car, his undercover car, so he pulls his Nissan over and pulls somebody over there really, really flying, and he was he told him to slow down and was giving him a ticket. And while he was on the side of the road, several people called the sheriff's office with a complaint and said, You got a teenager out here with a light in his little Nissan. Pulling people over. <laughs> That's his little Daniel. And he ain't a little bit of thing, and you don't want to pull, you don't want him to pull you over. But Daniel had that baby face, and so they were going to put Daniel. I forgot what county it was, but they changed, they changed their operations. They were going to put Daniel in as a student. Just so he could find out who's selling drugs in school. I'll make it easy for you. When we were in school, who was shooting road bands? Busting milk cartons and making all kinds of mess like that. You look at it, one of them. I come clean. I love. And y'all know Mr. Joy Roberts, he's such a big bad dude. He was another one. We were side by side, Poncho and <laughs> Poncho and the what about what Poncho's uh Cisco. Cisco. Yeah, Cisco. Cisco and Poncho. We were both doing that stuff and 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 but you know what? We were considered rough at that time and now. People love to have that again. Next time you tell me. Pull this out. I challenge you. I don't mean defending your family. I don't mean something like in basic relationships. I mean, if somebody comes to my house at 4 o'clock in the morning, he ain't coming for prayer. 
He breaks in my house at 4 in the morning. He ain't there for prayer. Before he leaves, he's going to need it. I'm talking about the people you know, the people you should be helping, the people that God has put in your way to make a difference in their life. Next time you're tempted to pull out this, pull out this instead. That day with David and Benson, I was expecting the worst. Instead of the worst. Wow. I messed up his messed up his crap a bit and I got blessed. I still to this day blows me away. Blows me away. But he picked up the towel. Everybody see. DJ can play something. I remember one day I was at Fountain, and we had some inspectors coming. We didn't know exactly when. We, we got a we got a little foreknowledge that they were going to be there within so many hours, and there was some stuff that needed to be done. And I couldn't get my driver in truck. Everybody's busy. They're all doing their stuff, and I said, I need somebody to drive in truck. And the supervisor walked in, well, you got to give at least an hour. We got this stuff, we got to get out. Give us an hour, we'll get you somebody. I said, but I don't have an hour. They said, we don't know what to tell you. Because we got to get the production out. And so I said, I got a solution. And I put down the clipboard, put down the pencil. And I said, show where the lift truck's at. And they showed me. The trucks were going all the time about their camera, I jumped in the moment. And I moved all the stuff I needed moved. While I was there, I did some work for somebody else. I was taking care of all this stuff. By the time I took care of all this stuff and put the park in the truck, I looked like somebody had just poured black dirt all over me. They had a good lift truck. The stuff was coming off from the stuff I was picking up. And it was crazy. Because people can't come and buy me and go, who'd you make mad? Who'd you make mad? I go, what are you talking about? You do manual labor. And I said, is that a problem? They go, but y'all guys don't want to do this. And I said, well, I'm not one of those guys. Y'all guys. And I said, I'm one of all of our guys. And this needs to be done. I know how to do it. I can do it. They go, okay. I got asked a hundred times today, who do I think mad? Did I get promoted? Was I going to be fired? And all kinds of stuff when I get up. I picked up a towel. I went through the mirror and saw how dark I was. I said, I can't leave these inspectors like this. So I said, I'm running quickly to take a shower. I run home and I'm way out the door. I heard again. Who the Lord you make, man? Look how, look how, look how nasty you are. I said, nobody. I said, I saw something need and I filled it. Get you a small cloth or something like that. And 
put it where you can see it in your house. And maybe put it, maybe cut it up, put some, put it in your car where you can see it. To remind you that God honors this. And it was the last powerful lesson Jesus had one on one with his apostles. Because after that, everything was communal. The very last lesson. Everybody bow your head. Close your eyes. Don't look around. Where's that hand?
CEO and vice president this year and said, we want you to fire that person. And I said, I know that person. She works for me. I said, fire her. And I said, she's done nothing worth of being fired. Yes, she has. I know she had. And I know it was God in me. They said, we told you to fire her. And I got up and I hit the table and I said, you want her fired? Fire yourself.